We are the voice of conscience. Not just this is good and this is bad, but we live in a way, and we need to grow into living this even more strongly. We live in a way that shines what is right in the world. We carry the word of Hashem through our families, through our bodies, through our communities in the world. So even if it wasn't Jews who sat down and wrote the Declaration of Independence, <clears throat> but it was the fact that Jews were alive that they were able to write, we hold these words to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. That's Jewish, right? It's Jewish that every single person is created in the image of God. And because they're created in the image of God and they have Tzalim Elohim, they have certain things. They should be treated with dignity and justice and fairness and kindness, right? And we live that. That's our job. So our first job, this is Hashem's Kira program, not even to make seminars, but to live in such a way that people are attracted to the light of who we are. I think that as firm Jews now, we need to think about how are we living this. And I think about what's going on in Israel right now. And I think we have to wake up a little bit. We have to look at ourselves. Because as we see the government cutting subsidies for Torah families, for big families, for Torah learning, we have to really look at ourselves instead of blaming the government and say, actually, we've been living for a hundred years next to our brethren in Israel. Not next to the Goyim, next to our brothers and sisters, secular Jews. And we haven't yet, in these hundred years, shined our light brightly enough that they come to us and say, here, I want to support you. Here's part of the money I earned so that you could sit and learn. I'm willing to go to work so that you could stay learning. I'm, I'm willing to, to take from what I earned so that you could feed your family because I understand I can't have 10 children, but I want you to have 10 children. And so here's some money to feed them because you are doing such amazing work in the world. I want to support you voluntarily with my own time and money. Right? We haven't gotten there. That's actually the way it was about 150 years ago when the Jews in Israel lived on the Chalukah, on the Chalukah system, right? Jews from all over the world sent their tzedakah money to Israel, to the Jews living there, because we all knew as a nation that those people living there were carrying something very special, and we wanted to support. So we did. But now that we're living together, not so easy. So we do have to look at ourselves. How do we shine our light to our neighbors, our Jewish neighbors, our brothers and sisters, our secular brethren in Israel, how are we shining? We need to shine more brightly towards them. So they'll be a part of us. So they'll want to be a part of us. We, we have this tendency to step apart. So, Seder, even to, even to secular families, certainly to slightly traditional families, is the family time. If that's the time that you're not there, the message is, because I became from, I became distanced from you. You know, the fear of every parent is uh, that they're going to lose their child. One of the reasons uh, why parents get so freaked out when their kids become from is because there's an, there's an implicit tokafa to them. That's true. Why are you from? I'm from. You should also be from. Even if the kid doesn't say it, the fact that the kid's doing it is, a, is an inherent tokafa in that. That's why you can become a Buddhist and it's okay. Whatever makes whatever makes my uncle happy <laughs> makes me happy. Uh, you know, all right, but let me come from, and if that principle doesn't apply because when my kid becomes a Buddhist, there's no message to me that I should also become a Buddhist. Okay, but when my kid becomes from, there is such a message to me. But we have to remember that. The person who changed is the child. 
<laughs> the parents are the same parents. They're the same loving parents. And suddenly my child's changing. And suddenly as a result of those changes, it looks like the child is getting further. No, I can't spend Shabbos with you. No, I can't spend Pesach with you. No, I can't eat your food. You know what it is to tell a mother whose joy is to cook for a child? I don't know. Not for me. And the parents see that the kid's growing. But it hasn't ended. Where is it going to end? So, it takes a lot of work to make sure that a child maintains his relationship with his parent. And you have to work it out. You have to work it out. And usually you have to work it out by meeting with the parents as well. I do not understand those McCarran who deal with students and, who do, and when the students become full, do not take the trouble to meet the parents. I don't know how you, how you propose to do that. You have to have a relationship with those parents, not to be much beyond them, but to be able to be able to work things out with them, to have develop a working relationship. You know, when the kid comes back and says, "This mystery rabbi will never get seen," right? Who's there in the dark alleys of Mexico somewhere? There, right? When this rabbi says, "The rabbi said that I can't eat your cookies anymore," the rabbi becomes evil. He's the one who's separating me from my child. 